Hello and welcome to another episode of Adam's Kitchen on Trust TV. I am Adam Mani Angora, your host. As you all know, in this program, we try to teach you different styles of cooking, ranging from locally made dishes to internationally recognized dishes. But in all this, we try as much as possible to stick to what is unique to our kitchen. So in today's episode, I will be teaching you how to prepare Zanzibar Masa, a stunning dish from Tanzania. But before we start, let us go on a quick break. We'll be back. Welcome back. So to prepare the most amazing Zanzibar Masa, these are the ingredients that we need. However, Zanzibar Masa can be eaten with different kind of soups or honey or even sugar. But for today, we are serving the Masa with pumpkin soup. First of all, to prepare Zanzibar Masa, we are going to need rice flour, some yeast, some honey, some baking powder, some ginger, some garlic. We also need a fresh local chicken egg. We are also going to use some oil. We have black Indian salt, some seasoning, also a mixture of rose and lavender. We also are going to use a mixture of rosemary and coriander. Then we are going to need some cardamom, black pepper, cloves, saffron, spinach, a combination of mint, celery, and parsley. We are also going to need some onions, um, pepper, yellow pepper, tomatoes. Uh, that's all we need for today's Zanzibar Masa. And first thing, first and foremost, is that we are going to mix our rice flour with water. Now, when using this, particularly for this episode, we have about 0.9 kilogram of rice flour, which we are ha perhaps going to use about um, 1.5 to 2 liters of water. Now I'm pouring my water into the mixture. So far I have put um, one liter of water because each of this cup is about 500 cl, sorry 500 ml. Okay, so I'm now mixing it. So you can see it's very very thick which means I will have now to add uh, some more water. See the consistency of the mixture. If in case we need to add more water, we will just go ahead and add it. So with this now, I'll go ahead and put my egg here. So I'm going to whisk the egg and then pour it inside of the mixture. and then stir it very well. And then we're going to use the yeast now. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm also going to add some baking powder. Not that much because if the baking powder is too much, it's going to be problematic. I am also going to add some honey. 
Okay. Uh, okay. And then we mix them very well. After this, now I'm going to add my cardamom. Then mix it well again. So having mixed all the ingredients here, we'll now cover our pot, put it under direct sunlight to ferment. This process is going to take about half an hour, an hour or two hours. I would highly recommend giving it two hours, especially when there isn't much sunlight. Okay, so with this, while we wait for the mixture to ferment, we will now begin the preparation of our pumpkin soup. For now, We'll go on a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. In case you are just joining us, you are watching Adam's Kitchen on Trust TV. And we have been making Zanzibar masa with pumpkin soup. Now, to make our soup, we are going to um, blend the items that we have already mentioned okay so for this one we don't need much fancy uh, cutting or something like that all we need to do is just to cut them to feed our blender usage so that we do not um, harm the blender okay i'm starting with my uh, spring onions And then with the red onions. Now, our pepper. See, depending on the capacity or the strength of your blender, you may like to chop them into smaller chunks. But as for this one, since the blender is uh, a bit powerful, it's a commercial uh, blender, and therefore, uh, which is very high performance, uh, we don't need just to cut them into smaller chunks it's just this bigger size we are good to go okay our tomatoes okay something very very important when slicing the tomatoes is to make sure that you remove all the tomato seeds we don't need them you know, peeling the ginger with a small spoon is much faster than the bigger one and also it's much faster and safer than using knife. Ginger is one of the most difficult things to blend while using whether it's high performance blender or not. Now that everything has been put inside of the blender, we will now go ahead and blend. I see. Now it works. Okay. So I can now push. And probably add some water if I like to make it faster. See. Okay. And then push it. this I can increase the speed See? I can now add more stuff in it ok 
okay? So it's good to always be careful about the quantity of things that we put inside of the blender. Some blenders may easily break, right? The coil might get burnt. We are lucky this one hasn't burnt, okay? Great. Perfect. Everything now is well blended. Then, this is our pumpkin that we already chopped and put inside of the pot. What we need to do now is to give it some heat, probably until boil, perhaps for five to seven minutes until the uh, pumpkin is really soft for blending again. We're going to blend it, okay? So now we're going to start, okay. While I am boiling my um, pumpkin, now is the time to make use of this pot. What we are going to do now is to get our oil and pour it inside of this pot. Okay, and then start our burner. Perfect. This oil will now be let to get very, very hot. And then we pour some amount of um, the puree that we just blend. Uh, let me add a little amount of oil. As you can notice, in the whole process we haven't used any protein yet. We have not put any meat, either chicken or beef or something. So it depends on your need. If you like, you can put any, either chicken, beef or whatever um, uh, protein you have available. But for this episode particularly, we've decided not to use any of the protein. Okay? So, let me get this off the blender and then be sure that the oil is hot. Okay. It's always better to add the puree when the oil is really, really hot. Now the moment of truth. We add some of the puree. It's okay like this. If you like, you can cover it. But if you do not cover, it gets fried much faster. So for this purpose, actually, we are not going to cover it to speed up the process. Let me check this. Okay, so while we are getting these things cooked, uh, let's go for a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. In case you are just joining us, you have really missed a lot. But I'm sure you will catch up. Okay, now our puree has been well fried. Let's check it and see. Oh yes, it has been fried very well. And at this point, I can turn off my burner and then go ahead and blend some of my uh, cooked pumpkin, right? So you know, put some in the blender. It's kind of hot. I would recommend usually allowing the pumpkin to cool down before putting it in your blender so as to avoid breaking down of the blender cup. Okay. Now to help 
reduce the impact of the heat. Let me add some water, some cold water in it. Okay. And then, where is my cover? So I can now begin to blend it. You blend it well until smooth, okay? We need smooth consistency of the whole thing. Let me just add a little bit of pumpkin. You know, in this soup, pumpkin is supposed to be the hero of it, and therefore we need to make use of as much pumpkin as possible. And then directly add the blended pumpkin into the puree. So, I would now turn it. And make sure at this point, the fire is being put to the lowest level. You can see now, the pumpkin is dominating the whole scene. And that's exactly what we want. Um, what I will do now is to begin to add some of the spices, okay? This one is my combination of rose and lavender. I would like also to add the mixture of coriander and rosemary. Now I'm adding some salt in it. Seasoning will also be added at this point. And then I will add my black pepper. Okay. Then a bit, a pinch of cardamom. Not necessary if you don't like it, but cardamom is one of the most awesome spices one can ever um, have. And now the saffron can also be added without being pounded. Can add as small amount of saffron as possible. Now the cloves can put maybe up to 10 pieces of cloves. If you like, you can put more than, more than that but then make sure you blend it, grind it with the mortar and pestle. See now, it's well grinded. Okay, see, do this. But at this point, don't forget to have your vegetables, your, your spinach already cut and kept aside, as well as our fragrant vegetables here. Those things are added when the soup is about 95 to above percent completed, because we don't want to overcook the vegetables. No? to maintain the nutritional value of the vegetables. So with this, you can see our soup is virtually 95% uh, completed. However, we will add it a little, uh, we add some more time to it before, before adding actually the vegetables just let's give it a few more minutes before we could do that 
So at this point now, let's begin with the spinach. And therefore we can go ahead and add the mix of um, the mix of mint, celery, parsley. Probably I would love to add some spinach. With this now I'll cover the pot and allow it to simmer for about one or two minutes. I'm so eager to test to have the feelings of what it tastes like. Well, by looking with my eyes, you can see uh, the soup is becoming really, it looks appetizing, uh, it looks stunning, it looks shiny. I just hope that it does taste as good as it looks. Now, I'll turn off my fire and that is done. The pumpkin soup is here by completed 100%. It's only to it for the time of testing, okay? Uh, while we go and check our mixture of the uh, Zanzibar Masa, I hope we can, we can declare a break and then sh uh, see you shortly. Thank you for staying with us. You are still with Adam's Kitchen on Trust TV. Now moving on with our uh, Zanzibar Masa, you can see that our mixture is ready. It, is, uh, it has risen really well, it's well fermented. So the next thing is to begin to fry. Let me start my burner and see what develops. As the pan is getting hot, all we have to do is to add some oil in it. Okay. Now I can use this brush to spread the oil. We do not use excessive oil and we try as much as possible to use uh, zero cholesterol oil to maintain the health standard of our recipes. Remember what I said in our previous episode that if you do not make your food to be your medicine then medicine will eventually become your food. So with this in mind health has always been our priority in whatever we prepare at Adam's Kitchen. So you can see how I pour the uh, mixture of the masa and then I immediately cover it and I make sure that my pan stays at the center of the fire and also we do not use to, uh, we don't need much fire okay the fire should be as low as possible so that it doesn't burn let's give it a while and one of the best ways to know that um, your masa is getting better is when you see some bubbles coming out of the uh, make sure that you put inside and it is also good to check after a while to see if the stuff is ready for actually uh, toning so make sure that your pan is always covered okay let's check let's see
So after toning the masa, you can give it just a few more seconds and then take it off fire and then we put another one again. So you can take this off. Hey. Welcome back. It is now the moment of testing. And my guest today is Aisha Babangida. Aisha, welcome to Adam's Kitchen. Thank you, Mr. Adam. So here is uh, Zanzibar Masa okay. being served for you. Oh. And uh, all we are waiting for is to see you give it a test. Okay. Okay. <laughs> With pleasure. Okay. <laughs> this is nice, Mr. Adam. Oh, wow, thanks. It's delicious. <laughs> thank you so very <laughs> I'm much. I'm speechless, I don't even know what to say. Oh, thank you so very much. If I am to rate it, I think yes. I'll give it 8 out of 10. It's oh, yes, very, very thank nice. you. Thank you I so like very much. And, um, you thank know, you. I can eat this all day. Wow, it's thank you so nice. much. <laughs> we will now be sending it to Tanzania then. Oh, to my be God. having <laughs> Zanzibar Masa. <laughs> that would be lovely, that would be nice. Yeah, thank you so very much. Okay. Now that Zanzibar Masa has been tested, Thank you so much for staying with us. Here, you have the opportunity to continue to learn and advance your knowledge of cooking, okay? So we hope to see you in our next episode. For now, we say bye-bye. Thank you.